Systemic risk is a term that came crashing into popular discourse with the past financial crisis, and since has become a key term in our vocabulary for talking about the new context of the 21st century. Systemic risk is mounting due to the increased connectivity fostered by globalization and the information revolution. The interdependence of massive global networks has caused systemic risk to increase exponentially in recent years. Today, it would appear that systemic risk is mounting along almost all dimensions, environmental, technological, social, and economic. Systemic risk is the risk of a breakdown of an entire system, rather than simply the failure of any individual part. It is a product of the way the parts act and interact across the whole system, to create the emergence of a critical system state and eventual crisis. Systemic risks take many forms. Financial, as the globalization of markets and complex linkages create risk of cascading failures. Environmental degradation creates the potential for whole ecosystem collapse and systemic changes in climate. Technological, centralization of data mass automation and the Internet of Things create mounting risk of critical cyber attacks. Socio-political, with erosion of trust in social institutions, stalling political systems, and the rise of populism. The term perfect storm is often used to describe the somewhat paradoxical situation we find ourselves in today. As systemic risk is mounting, our collective capacities to cooperate and coordinate effectively through existing institutional structures to respond to it appears to be diminishing. Risks are intensifying in scale, scope, and frequency, but the collective capacity to respond appears significantly lacking. In the coming decade, with the ongoing expansion of information networks, we will see the increasing convergence of what in the past looked to be widely divergent domains. Not just insurance and capital markets, but these will become ever more integrated with security. Whereas in the past, such phenomena as natural disasters, human security, cybersecurity, inequality, or political disruption were seen as largely separate and distinct phenomena. As the networks of connectivity and linkages expand across and between domains, we move further into this new world of systemic risk every day. As the connectivity proliferates, we shift from a world where these vertical domains have little to do with each other to a flat world of networks. A new understanding and approach to risk, investment, and security that is relevant for an age of networks that span across our traditional categories and verticals is now much needed. The modern conception of risk that emerged in the 16th century was that man was not at the mercy of some sort of supernatural force or god that we could use mathematical modeling, an understanding of probability and uncertainty, to realize that we were actually much more in control of our own destiny. It took a long time for those ideas to fully pass through to industry, but today we have a massive, sophisticated edifice of models and institutions for managing risk and security. Yet for all its great achievements, this edifice is based upon a reductionist analytical conception of risk that creates its own limitations. With our traditional linear ways of thinking, we tend to try to isolate phenomena, searching for a cause for every effect. Yet when systems become complex, linear cause and effect break down. Because of high levels of interconnectivity, it is more the structure of the system that comes to define how it operates and behaves, rather than the properties and behavior of any of the parts. Due to this foundation, it is unfortunate to report that our capacity to deal with mounting risk remains on the level of dealing with these individual parts, while lacking the theoretical or institutional capacities to deal with the emergent overall macro patterns formed out of the networks of globalization through which systemic risk travels today. In a world of mounting systemic risks, we need to be asking the question, how do we systematically combat risk? because this is certainly not what we do at the moment. We are incentivized to create risk and to ensure against risks, but we aren't actually systematically incentivized to find and remove them. We have a risk industry, but not a de-risk industry. 
it would seem quite extraordinary that with the massive multi-trillion dollar industries of insurance and security designed to reduce and manage risk, almost none of our resources are actually directed at reducing systemic risk. How could we achieve such a mismatch? We have a security industry that is good at securing parts, creating a world of borders and boundaries. But we do not have a resilience industry for strengthening whole systems that is required in a world of connectivity. Our approach to risk is a product of our linear perception of the world that is becoming outdated as we move into this new world of complexity. Where networks expand and nonlinearity becomes the norm instead of the exception. The financial crisis illustrates that we do not measure risk in a systematic way, but a very partial way. As systems-level crises become more prevalent, it becomes ever more apparent that we are only accounting for risks on one level, and not in a holistic fashion that would be required to actually channel resources and capabilities towards tackling them. What is needed is a holistic approach to asset allocation and risk management, Systems thinking is the consideration of something in its totality, its interaction with a wide range of factors and environment. Taking a holistic perspective to risk means factoring in all relevant metrics required to sustain the whole system and thus mitigate systemic criticality. Ultimately, the question is how do we switch our systems from creating these externalities to solving them? From creating negative externalities that lead to systemic risk to patterns that create positive externalities and build systems-level resilience. We tend to think of risk in terms of loss and systemic risk as something negative. However, if systemic risk is a multi-trillion dollar expense, then solving for it is likewise a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. This is really a question of system-level financial innovation so as to begin to create financial instruments and institutions that are actually accounting for the value, resilience, and risk on the macro level. This is still nascent, with such things as social impact bonds or green bonds, but as the costs of systemic failures increase, it becomes more and more viable to build financial services that integrate for both utility to the agent and value to the whole. Full cost accounting and systemic risk are two sides of the same coin. Investing in the whole to make it resilient means to create structures that push value and investment outwards to a diversity of investment vehicles, to have financial networks that engender the many channels, pathways, and diverse nodes required to sustain the whole network. In this paper, we give an outline to the nature of systemic risk, trace how it has evolved over the past decades, and how to use systems thinking, new economic financial models, and new technologies to build resilience against systemic failures across the many dimensions along which it exists today.